Hi, my name is Satcha Michaela, and I am a domestic violence survivor. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so whenever I can get a chance to share my story in hopes that it will inspire or encourage someone who may be in a domestic relationship right now to just encourage them to seek help, or if you know someone that's in a abusive relationship, just go to that person and let them know that you're there for them whenever they're ready. So I just wanted to just share a little bit about my story. Um, 13 years ago, my uh, ex-husband, he broke into my house and he tried to kill me. He pretty much left me for dead. Um, our divorce was final on a, a Friday. And two days later, he had broken into my home and stabbed me in front of two of three of my children. Uh, my oldest was 12, my youngest was two at the time. And he told them to stand there and watch me kill your mom. And so they watched him stab me over and over and over again. But as I'm talking about the stab wounds, I mean, that's now how I almost died. I mean, he choked me. He choked me till I passed out. And I tell people that I clearly heard God's voice say, not today. Your kids would not watch you die, not like this. So we were able to get up, you know, run out the house. And I remember banging on the neighbor's door and I just passed out. So now I woke, I'm at the hospital. Uh, my family of friends is not there. I'm wondering what's going on, but it's a police investigation because my ex-husband fled the scene. He's on the run. So no one can come in or out of the hospital room. But I hear my 12 year old son and I come to find out that he's getting stitches in his face because my ex-husband stabbed him in the face. So when I told you that my ex-husband choked me till I passed out, I found out that my 12 year old had jumped on his back and said, get off my mom because she's not breathing. So that's how I was able to get up and we were able to you know, run and get out the house. But my ex-husband, he was um, convicted. He served 12 years. Um, he was convicted of attempt murder and felonious assault against a minor. Um, but as I talk about the physical abuse, you know, the emotional abuse is what really had me because for 10 years I didn't tell no one really my story I moved here to Texas in 2012 and no one knew anything about what happened I would go I would smile I would you know go to events no one knew what really happened to me until a little over two years ago I decided to share my story I wanted to share my story because I saw something on the news where um, a wife, an ex-husband had went into a house and killed his ex-wife and some of her friends. So then God told me, okay, it's time to share your story. So as I started sharing my story, and I um, thank goodness uh, for James Thomas, because he put me on the cover of Southern Dallas Magazine. So that's when people start really hearing my story. And they didn't know, okay, that I was stabbed 21 times and left for dead. Um, but yes, because of that, you know, now women are coming up to me and they saying, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. So as I started sharing my story, it was healing for me. So um, that's why I just say, I just wanted to just get on here and just tell you about what happened with me and just to let you know that you are worth whatever it is that you believe. Because as I started sharing my story, I designed a shirt that says, I am worth it. So whenever I speak, I call that shirt my uniform. <laughs> I was in uniform to remind myself that I am worth whatever it is that I believe that day or at that moment. So I will always wear that shirt and I'll remind myself that I am worth love, that I am worth my peace, that I am worth joy. You know, whatever it is that I felt that I was worth, I defined it. I didn't let anyone else define my worth for me. So that's how my whole I Am Worth It movement came about, just to remind people uh, to define your own worth. Don't let anyone define it for you because people will say all kind of things about us. And sometimes we start to believe it. But no, we have to define our own self-worth. Don't let no one do it for you. So I hope if you see this message from today on, you know, you would define 
your own worth and say, I am worth and you fill in the blank. Don't let no one else do it for you. So I hope that my story um, inspired someone. If you are in an abusive relationship, I would say seek help. It's not always that easy because I stayed with my husband. That wasn't his first time hitting me. I stayed with him throughout our marriage, but when he um, tried to kill me, we were divorced. I mean, I was living in my own ho home. So I would say plan. You know, um, get with your friends and family and let them know what's going on. That's the hardest part, telling someone. But I definitely encourage you to tell someone. And just if you're a friend or a family member and know someone, don't pressure that person. Just let them know that you're there for them. That's it. Just say, I'm here for you when you are ready. And really be there for them. So I just wanted to just, you know, share this with you and just let you know that you are worth it. You are worth your peace. You are worth your joy. You are worth love. You are worth happiness. You are worth everything, you know, everything that God has for you in, you know, in your life. You know, you have to believe it. So that's my story. And, you know, just know that there's help out there and there's people out there that really care for you. So I am such a Michaela. I am super excited. I just legally changed my name. I was still carrying my ex-husband last name, but two weeks ago, I changed my name. So I'm no longer Setra Stevenson. I am Setra Michaela. When you say freedom, I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. So you all, um, you have just a blessed and wonderful life. And just always tell yourself every day, every day, I am worth it. I am worth it. You are, you are worth it.